Okay, we're going to look, take a look now at uh, generating a finite element model um, in Grasshopper and Rhino and then analyzing it in Analysis Program GSA. What you'll find that the this model is driven and, and described by a combination of some curves in Rhino um, and some sliders in, in Grasshopper for, for um, specifying things like floor to floor height, etc. Um, so if I start Grasshopper, you'll find I've already set up the basis of a, uh, of a tower model. And just to step through quickly part of what I've already done, that I've set up that it takes, collects those three profile curves, lofts through it, and also generates some planes up through the height of the building. That also can be changed with the story height and then also and loft intersects that loft surface with each plane to give us some curves which represent the perimeter of, of the tower. I've also set up, you'll notice, uh, a curve to represent a core which will have some C-shaped walls which we'll use to uh, mesh the finite elements uh, in the model that we build. So the first thing we'll do is perhaps make the slab diaphragms um, and we'll use the GSA areas to do that. GSA areas comprise of, of boundary curves or lines. So these these things are already lines, the perimeters of each slab, so I can feed that into the line. Uh, and then I can also nominate a meshing step size. So I'll set this to a meter or a thousand millimeters in this particular model. The next thing I'm gonna do then is is use these these lines now, um, which we'll have a quick look at. Uh, they're not displayed and, and reported in Grasshopper in exactly the same format as GSA. So the next thing we want to do then is make some uh, cross some GSA areas. So I'll grab this component. So I wire the lines into the lines input for the area, and I nominate a 2D property identification. So let's make one for the slopes. This will create the, the areas that will be added into the GSA model, but to mesh them, we'll also need to convert them into, into uh, regions. Now, the first thing we also need to do is, uh, is add the voids in through the lift core that the service lift, as the slab won't exist at that particular location. So, I've already created a series of lines here. Um, that, that represent the walk around and the lift core. So similar way to this, I can actually add that area here. Now this time I want to change the area type and make it a void instead of a slab so that the mesher knows to leave a hole in that location. So it doesn't actually really matter too much what the property identifier is. What we then need to do is combine these two areas into a region. Now, we have a quick look at the path of the data. It doesn't quite match. You can see here that these areas have uh, seven part trees or branches in the in the data path, and this one only has four. So what we need to quickly do is graft this data three times so that the path matches. So one, two. So if I wire this now in, we should see the seven branches that matches or the areas representing the voids. So the region takes lists of areas and nodes and lines, whatever comprises that region, and we will then get a region comprising of an area and a void. Okay. The other thing we need to do then also is add in the walls of the lift core. Now, I've already done some special data matching of two sets of lines. I've generated some lines up the edge walls of the of the core, and then a similar technique to the grafting here, adjusted the path or the arrangement of the data so that it lines up so that you get four lines making each wall. So let's add a new area. and we can just wire these groups lines in. 
set a property, let's perhaps make our core walls property 2 and as you can see here I've left the front wall open so that basically, if we quickly add a region then sets the finite element parts of our model the last thing I wanted to quickly do was add in some some um, points, some columns around them, the corner points of the building. So here I took the discontinuities of the floor diaphragms, added some polylines walking up and then exploded them into individual ones to add some columns. So we can de define the shape of the column. Let's make it a rectangle and let's say make it 800 deep. 600 wide and we should see here that it's created a rectangle of that property. We can then create some beam elements so create beam we can nominate these lines as being the path of the beam and it just needs a property sorry, one thing, we need to create a property section property from this particular shape. So we wire the P into the P then wire this property into the property. And now if we look in the model we can see that the columns have been generated running up around the corners of the building. Remember this is all parametric so if I actually shift the lift core around the void elements areas will all update and redraw. So I think we're ready to shift this model into GSA. Remember there's a special bake button for sending the model through to GSA. Uh, so if I just double click on it, we can see it's hidden by the window here. The text prompt saying that it started baking. Now it's updated and it gives a report of the number of nodes etc that it shifted. And if we load into, into GSA, we can see our data, our model here. Remember if you actually want to see the areas and regions, change the layer to design and there we can see our, our areas and our, our regions. What we need to do next is mesh those regions. So let's just try. So region mesh generation, generate 2D mesh regions. All And if we go back to the analysis layer, we can see here that it has meshed in our floors and core walls. So we just need to quickly check that we've applied to 2D properties for the slab and for I didn't actually assign different properties, but let's just make them concrete. Sorry, section property. And the 2D properties. We can make one. The first one was the slabs. Let's make that 150 thick. Walls and the 200. Okay. Two final things to quickly do. We'll assign some boundary restraints to the bottom most nodes. 
and we just need to apply some load. So let's simulate some wind or an earthquake by applying gravity in a horizontal direction. And then let's see, hit analyze. And of course GSA hasn't by default been able to produce a mesh of its own that it can analyze, but we can easily re resolve this particular error. We can find those elements that it's having problems with, and we can sculpt and make them to triangle elements. Okay, analyze again. then analyze, check how this particular building arrangement's gone, so we can plot some deformed shapes. And we can show some stresses. Okay, hope that helps explain some of the options for uh, parametrically defining and creating a finite element model from GSA.